uh, what kind of coach he is. He he was a assistant coach for a Brooklyn fourth grade girls team. That's his only coaching experience. This team came out of the box early season against some subpar teams, and they were able to win, and I think they kind of gave us hope. But since they've hit the teams that mean something, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty bad when you, you know, you're going to lose games in the NBA. But how they've been losing, it's unacceptable on, on the effort part. You know, you're going to miss buckets. Offensively, you're going to have bad nights. But defensively, if you're not challenging mentally and physically your opponent, they're going to run over you like Miami is a serious team. And so I don't know, man. Uh, this, this trend is not cool. And it's, it's, it's just not cool. I mean, they need to get on the bus tonight and get some White Castle burgers and, and drive to Atlanta. <laughs> and they need to think about who they are and what they need to do because what they're doing right now ain't even close to Laker basketball. Not even close. You know, it, to me, when you, when you watch how the Lakers have played the last couple of games, it reminds me of, uh, uh, of some teams when they're mad at the coach and they're trying to get him fired. <laughs> and it's just what it looks like, man. I, and I know they, they love J.J., and I'm not saying that they're trying to get him fired, but it just looks like an uninspired team. It reminds me of a team I played on when next thing you know, Dale Harris got fired. And we got Kerr, and the next thing they win a couple of championships. But they need to find a way to find some type of spark because the spark is not there. You know, it's almost like, you know, to me, I, I think about guys on that bench that can provide energy. There's not an energy guy on this bench. And so I'm thinking sometimes you need to, you know, mix some things up or muck some things up. And I'm going to bring up quickly from the G League, a guy who has a lot of energy, a lot of passion, you missing a point guard, hey, AR, bring this kid up. I'll, you know what? I'm going to give him a shot to bring some energy because you know he's going to take advantage of his shot. And to me, everybody right now just look like they're like, yo, I'm waiting for this. Oh, hey, I'm like, oh, should I say it? One, two, three, Cancun. Is it a little too early? But it just looks like they don't have the energy. They just not inspired. And they need to find a way to get that love of winning back. They, this guy is a... They hired a podcast. He really looked was 40 on a now. He looked like me. They hired a guy like, because he was doing X's and O's. 15-year NBA career. I don't care. You do not care. Randy, I thought I, you was on the Lakers side. They should have hired some, Sam He needs some criticism, too. Who? JJ? Yeah. No, no. Because yeah. if it was somebody else, they'd be like, killed. Man, Darvin Ham. If it was Darvin Ham, they'd be on Darvin Ham head. No, we wouldn't. Yes, I would. No, we wouldn't. Yes, I would. That's cap. No, we man, y'all better y'all better stop reading them internet damn things, man. Man, y'all be killing. Dar uh, we man. was not talking man, no, about no kill, Darvin Ham kill, at the kill beginning J of the kill season. Kill JJ Reddick the same way y'all was killing. Darvin okay, we're gonna wait until we what kill. Mean? It's right now. No, we didn't kill. Right now. Show us the article. right now. That Kill him we, right now. No, why? Did Har Darvin Ham didn't get killed right now. Yes. He no, he didn't get killed in December. Tell JJ. We won, we won, we won the Western name with the no. same record. No. Remember, tell we was over here celebrating, right? No. We like, happy. let's no. be honest. We were happy. No, y'all. We were happy no, right, right now. No, we were was celebrating. No, was we won. That was the We were sitting here clapping. No, that was and then the what happened year. is after we won the championship. NBA Cup championship. NBA Cup championship. Shit went sour. I think we went three for like 15. That's when that was, we started talking bad. Nah, that's when we that got That was old. last year. Remember, yeah, Ham was there for two years. Yeah, that's last year. Okay, when they first started, you guys not even had Darvin no Ham starting Cam Reddish. Oh, yeah, you can't defend the title. He was trying all kinds of Still the reigning champion. Yeah, you guys can't even defend the title. Still the reigning champion. That's how bad y'all are. Still not that bad. Champion. Okay, I'll give, I give you that. I'll give you that. He didn't even defend the title. I'll give you that. You know, think about it. Damn, JJ, you can't win the. God damn it. Yep. Can't even get to the semis. You can't get to the semis? Not there. Darvin Ham did that. Man, <laughs> D Ham did? Mm. 12 and 9. They were 12 and 9 last year. Mm. Right? It was 12 and 9, right? Yeah. Same, same, same record. record. Same record. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like they're like, exactly where we thought they were going to be. I mean, injury issues. No Jerry Vanderbilt. Yeah. Doesn't say I don't like uh, huh? game The change. rookies playing no really well. Their role like, players oh, I, are not really playing well, and they still right in the middle. I don't uh, like that. Like, like, like where, when does reality. <laughs> Versus your expectations get closer to each other. Never. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Lakers, re where do we have the Lakers? Y'all didn't have them in the playoffs. No, we didn't. We said top not. six. We had them finishing top six. So why the fuck do you, we right where y'all had us predicted. So what are we talking about? 
There's no expert. Nobody's around here talking about championship. We got right where we are. I was hoping we're going to fight for seven, eight, nine, ten. No, you know what, JJ? Yeah, yeah, you did say Lakers finals. Finals. You got to sit down. I did say Lakers. That's me. <laughs> even, <laughs> though, even though I had them about seven, eight seed. <laughs> right? I didn't say Lakers. Yeah, that's what I said. Even though I had them about seven, eight seed. Right? We still have them seven, eight seeds, so I don't know what the we right where we supposed to be. Nah. We 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 coasting. No. No. It ain't looking. Playing good. possum, that, if you will. That's but I'm just saying it's not like we we not playing up or down. We're right where we Thank you. Like the expectation, oh, y'all got LeBron, he's 40, but we're going to treat him like he's 22, and he's supposed to carry this team no, and do no, all. That's what no, y'all no, doing? No, no, it ain't. No, it ain't our, no, sit him down. Our best player is 40 years old. No, that's a, the that's been a problem. He's not the best player, though. AD is AD? out there. AD? AD? Supposed to, yeah. AD had a good first cool. five games. We, now we, we happy. No, I'm not that happy. Is. Same old I'm shit. No, I'm yeah. not happy. I'm not happy. Fuck yeah, that's that. your problem. Uh, as we, a Laker fan, the rest of the Laker fan, we happy with AD's no, play. No, mm -hmm. yeah, like, we can't give him breaks. We can't give JJ breaks like we did it. Nah. We didn't give JJ. He got to amp this shit up. Who? Something got to happen. Demand some shit. Who? JJ. You got to tell LeBron to come sit down a little bit. Hey, hey, there's no way I'm going to have 31 in three quarters and then I only take two shots in the fourth unless I'm just sitting on the bench. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going for the 4 0. -oh. Play, that's, I think you play seven or eight minutes in that fourth that's quarter. That's the seven. momentum. That's the momentum as a scorer. Like, you don't just stop at three quarters and be like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Man, nah. Yeah, that's so, it. That's it right there. So, <laughs> can you know? How many minutes he play? Uh, How many minutes did he play in the fourth quarter? Uh, about seven minutes, I think. So, se seven two eight. shots in seven. Two shots in seven minutes. Why? Is that a him thing? But So, there, so it's both thing. It's a, every, whoever it's, played things, <laughs> yes. whoever coached things, yes. whoever played things. Yes, yes. To be honest. Yes. Right? You, you're supposed to be your best. And you, but the, we, but so supposed to be your best it's player. happened under every coach. It's yes. Coach. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That's so what I'm saying about Darwin. It's it's a, every, so therefore, that says everybody's included, yes, right? It is. It's. Talk about it, man. You got the It's talk the people about that's on the. I'm going to start with the group, people that's calling the plays, right? Who's that? The. the Absolute head coaches. Right now, it's J.J. Reddick. Before, before it was Darwin. Before it was Vogel. Vogel. So it's been a, right? But right now, it's J.J. You are new coach, first year situation, trying to establish yourself as a, as a good coach in this league, right? Mm -hmm. And at one of the most, if not the high, most high Profile job in the in the game. Yep. You got a forty year old guy that'll be forty this this month. Very soon. Which is a great day, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um. And you this Anthony Davis is, has been doing what he's supposed to so far this season. Stepping up to the plate as we can see, averaging thirty and eleven, which is crazy. Great number. Mm -hmm. Very good number. For him, crazy. So, J.J., this is your opportunity to really put this team in his lap. Absolutely. For him to take over because the guy is 40. This is your opportunity right here. Mm -hmm. You can't allow that for this man to take two shots in the fourth quarter. You did TV last year some of these games in the playoffs where he only took two shots, and you talked about this on the air. <laughs> Get him. So how can you be in this current situation and not adjust and adapt to it? And, and hold on, time out. Hold on, we gonna call. Hold on, throw him the ball right now. Throw him the ball. Hey, we running turn five, turn four, drop this, swing this, drop whatever to get number three to basketball, man. This is what JJ Reddick should be saying during the timeout. Absolutely, right. IQ, Bron, you on the floor with him. You on the floor with him. You, you got to go to him. This is, damn, big fella ain't got no shot in a minute. Big, damn, big, you, you, he, he's supposed to be this superior guy, right? He remember play by play, he can run it back to you. Time, score, situation, who didn't shoot it, who passed. This is your opportunity right now to know that the big fella ain't got no shots. So, Anthony Davis, you got to speak up. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, man. Man, they got, they, man, listen here, man. I could find a college team 
to play that game with Miami and not get beat by 41. I can find a G League team to play hard and play together as a unit and not get beat by 41. They got the Cowboys shite beat out of them, boy. And J.J. Reddick lame because he was supposed to make the – that's why I love Phil Jackson, boy. Phil Jackson did not bail you out. He did not make them players that were just sitting on the bench that whole time hurry up and get in the game and have to take that shellacking while the starters sit there and chew gum and act like they cool. Nah, Phil would have let y'all get whipped all the way into the fourth quarter and then probably by the last six, seven minutes, he would have gave some guys some looks. Because he'd be teetering the fence. He'd be like, damn, I don't know if I want to give these young guys some looks and exposure, or do I want these starters to know that you got to stay in here and take this embarrassment? Because this is a shame. J.J. Reddy, you had high standards when you was a news broadcaster and you were just running your goddamn on mile. Oh, boy, you had all the X's and O's. You had all the stuff to say. Boy, your mouth did never stop running. And this just shows you. And I don't want to hear nobody say, Kwame, why are you always talking about race? Because I can fucking see. Because I can see that it's different. And I like to win. And I like to compete against the best. So that's why I don't compete with you. I compete with white boys. I'm the only guy on the internet that said, I compete with white boys you know why because they winning you know why they win they don't cancel each other you don't see them online they'll have a debate but they don't be online trying to kill each other unless it's about that money like like what i think they did to that united healthcare guy that ceo unless it's about them millions then they'll beef and they ain't gonna do too much talking then it's just gonna go pew pew Everything I said about these niggas was right. Maybe if you coach the team, they will highly respect you, especially King Ramon. I mean, you are a proud black man. Now nah, they ain't going to respect me. I'm a bus, remember? They damn sure ain't going to respect no black man. J.J. Reddick is being respected by King James, but J.J. Reddick is the only coach, really, that I've seen LeBron James respect. Darvin Ham damn sure ain't get his respect. He was walking off the court. Well, he walked off with almost with JJ, but he ran back on. But you know, uh, that's a real disrespectful little bastard. That man running around, disrespect Darvin Ham, put his hands up, defiant with the coach in the huddle. But with JJ Reddy, he said everything JJ say, I one thousand percent agree with. Make JJ the new logo, NBA no brains attack. This shit don't make no sense. How do they mind the game? LeBron is a weenie dog. I don't care who don't like it. TP, LeBron, I've seen enough of LeBron James to know a white boy licking booty dog, and that's what LeBron James is. He's their lap dog. He's their boy. It's a shame. And I'm ashamed that everybody in here and all of these fake Laker channels and all these other people run around here with this protection program for J.J. Reddick. It ends. It's over with. His ass should be fired if you have any type of moral dignity, ethics, anything. He should be demanded to be fired immediately. If that was a black coach, he'd be gone. And we don't have no question about it. Every single game they lose, they've got blown out 10 times already. And the only wins they got is against depleted teams and bottom feeders. Make it make sense. They fired Darvin Ham. They fired Darvin Ham. To do what? To hire this bum and lower the expectations. He had allegations of calling multiple women the N-word. The one girl said that he sent her an email 
with all types of racial epithets and a picture of a monkey and watermelon. That's what the girl said. But did any of the media ask J.J. Reddick about this? Did any of the media ask J.J. Reddick about this? No, he was protected. He got that protection plan we don't get. There ain't no way on hell that man set up there on national TV and talk condescending about a black man in Doc Rivers. A black man that had a thousand wins, a world championship, and a coach of the year. Only 3% of coaches in NBA history did that. And y'all sat up there and whipped them to a him. You bunch of buck dancing bonanzas. I hate you niggas. Every last one of you. Man ain't did nothing. Set his ass up there on national TV. And try to strip this man of his dignity. And y'all went with the play. Disgusting. A thousand lashes, nigga. And I got the strap. Y'all set up here, man. And let this man hoodwink the world. They got so much hatred. I want y'all to think about this. They got so much hatred for Doc Rivers, bro. But this bum, y'all see on y'all screen who LeBron James propped it up. This bum was talking condescending on national TV. And ain't nobody do nothing. Everybody shut up. Everybody criticized the brother man, Doc Rivers. But this bum who talked so condescending to that black man. And he talked about how much he knew about the game and how much different everything would be. And this fool, he got an opportunity. And I thank God. I thank the good Lord that what they did with this bum. I thank the good Lord every single day that with this bum that y'all see on y'all screen, they gave him the same team they gave Darvin Ham. I thank God for that. Don't give them no better team. They talk, and this dude talked condescending to Darvin Ham all during the preseason, and y'all let him. Y'all let him. Taking sneak shots. Y'all let this bum. And now he got the gig with the same squad, same circumstances, and look at this bum. Look at this bum. Disgusting. And everybody else had to sit down and in their careers for LeBron James. Now, a couple things here. It's easy to point out that the bloom is off the J.J. Redick rose. And, and I, look, he's, a, he's an arrogant, condescending guy that has turned off a lot of people with his attitudes. Um, I think the biggest issue with him is how unqualified he was. I mean, this is a guy with the unearned arrogance of Pat Riley and even less of a resume than Randy Fund who at least was an assistant coach for years before getting that job. Who thought this was going to work out? Jason, think about how he got the job. LeBron? Yeah, he shipped, he sipped Chardonnay with LeBron <laughs> on a podcast. And it goes to show you, look, J.J. Redick was an excellent college basketball player. Had a really long NBA career. He knows the game. But it is easy to sit up in that ivory tower and second and third guess everybody. And you know what the most alarming thing is? The Lakers had the exact same record last year with Darvin Ham, who people could not wait to throw under the bus. Then you have the thing with Bronny James, another unqualified individual to be in the organization. Like, well, well, this that's is the what LeBron James wants. I, I'm, this look, is, he wanted J.J. Redick. He loves yep. having an owner that's unqualified, that he can bully and control the same way he tried to bully and control Dan Gilbert. This is LeBron James. He tried to bully Pat Riley in the Miami Heat organization. This is LeBron James getting it his way, and these are the results. Yeah, well, Jason, why do you think I'm a Laker fan in recess? So that, I mean, I don't want to repeat <laughs> myself, but yes, that, that, that guy right there. I, I have never felt such apathy in our city 
over this franchise. Honestly, even after Magic had the HIV and we had to sit through that era with Rory Sparrow and Sedale Three and Antonio Harvey and Pig Miller, I mean, that, that was some mediocre, boring basketball. But you know what? We felt like those guys are Lakers. They're one of us. LeBron is a carpetbagger, and there's still a lot of Kobe loyalists. The cult of Kobe is still very, very strong. What's your post-game message after a, a tough loss like that and, and kind of on top of some other recent tough losses? To you or to the team? Um... There has to be some some ownership, and uh, I think when a, a group is not performing well, um, which happens, and it, it happens to bad teams, it has, happens to good teams, it happens to great teams, um, you can splinter, and it's easy to not want the ownership, particularly when it's embarrassing. Um, I'm embarrassed. We're all embarrassed. That's not. Uh, it's not a game that I thought we had uh, the right fight, the right professionalism. You know, not sure what was. Lost in translation. Um, there has to be some ownership on the court, and I'll take all the ownership in the world. This is my team, and I lead it. And I'm embarrassed, but I can't. I can't physically get us organized. I can't physically be into the basketball. I can't physically talk and call out reds and physically call out coverages. And it's you know I'm not. And by the way, I'm not blaming players. That's not. I I I, I own this. I own this, but going to need some ownership on the court as well. You know, it's, it's, there's not a, there's not a, uh, there's not a sense from, from me that, that we're together right now. And, and that's what we say in the huddle. It doesn't, doesn't feel that way. Doesn't feel that way. And again, we're, you know, we're in a we're in a tough stretch, and we're we're all we're all trying to find it. Hero got going in the third quarter. We all are familiar with his capabilities, but what did you see from your guys' perimeter defense that may have aided in his ability to get hot? That yeah, um, he made so many. I'm trying to remember them all. Um, you know, there was a couple um, not being in the basketball. There was a couple where we were in rotation. Um, there was, a, there, you know, it's funny because I felt like earlier in the year we were having trouble um, at the point of attack, and we've actually been better there. Um, having a lot of trouble. I don't know what they ended up with them a lot tonight. Yeah, we're having trouble with our transition defense. I think overall we've been better there. Um, you know, we're like having trouble right now on both ends with like base level game plan stuff. It's 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 odd. It's it's very odd, and I don't know if that's the travel and the lack of practice time. But um, yeah, to to like really not execute your like not an adjustment, right? Are your are we went into the game with our base level coverage and. That's not a one through five. That's not like anything special we're doing. You can't really make adjustments if you can't <laughs> execute the base level coverage. So, you know, the answer to that um, probably is is next. Word out. Yo, JJ Reddick is trash, B. JJ Reddick is trash. Yo, first of all, let's get into this game. Do y'all realize that the Lakers? for two consecutive games have been blown out by at least 30 points. 30 points. They got beat by 41 points. 
41 points? Are you even kidding me right now? 41 points? How do you get beat by 41 points? How does that even happen? J.J. Redick literally looked like he was going to blow a gasket. Like He looked like he almost popped a blood vessel on his forehead. J.J. looked like he didn't even know what to do with himself. He looked like he was getting ready to start fighting, like throwing hand, like 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 throwing punches at his assistant coaches. JJ looked dejected in that game. Mind the game. Turns out JJ Reddick don't know what the hell he is doing out there. How do you feel about the thought of him being a head coach in the NBA? Because that's what the rumors are saying, that ultimately he's going to be a head coaching candidate. They've mentioned him in Charlotte. They've mentioned him with the Los Angeles Lakers. That's to just mention two teams. Um, how do you feel about that, knowing what you know about him as a basketball mind and now a basketball commentator? I, personally, I really hope he gets the job because then he'll understand some of the things that he has a problem with me and other coaches that you hear on this podcast. He'll realize not as easy as you think. And, and some of these decisions that you have to make this week, are- you know, it's an opportunity for us to be in the gym and um, get some practice time with us not making the cup. So we'll 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 do that. Yeah, you you, you talked about ownership. What do you need from from your leaders, um, from LeBron and AD on the court? Um, what do you need from them in the locker room at moments like this? Yeah, I mean, Bron and I spoke this morning. We had a nice conversation, one of many we've had, and and I um, thought I thought to be honest with you that I don't know what he score he scored tonight or whatever, but you know he he was very talkative with his teammates. He, he was encouraging them like that. I need I need him to uplift his teammates, and because you know a lot of us we're going through it right now, and um, I think with AD, you know, he's he's not had the performances that he had to start the year off and there's a level of frustration and and he'll get out of it I have no doubt he'll get out of it um, you know we we say this <laughs> with most teams because uh, most teams now uh, with the new rules um, you know AJ Redick they... was never shy about his basketball knowledge throughout his career as a player and especially in his post-retirement podcasting era he painted himself as a basketball savant someone who had a deep understanding of the game both on and off the court his podcast was well received often dissecting the intricacies of the game shedding light on team dynamics and sharing personal insights that captivated both casual fans and hardcore basketball junkies alike but here's the thing, there's a massive difference between analyzing a game from behind a microphone and actually coaching one. Fast forward to Reddick's first season as the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. The excitement surrounding his hiring was palpable, there was a sense of fresh energy, a belief that his intellectual approach to basketball would translate into success. Fans envisioned a Lakers team revitalized by a coach who had supposedly studied every aspect of the game. They thought Reddick, with all his on-air analysis, had the tools to lead the Lakers back to championship contention. However, as we stand now, after 22 games into his first season as head coach, the picture is far less flattering. The Lakers' performance under Reddick has been disappointing, to say the least. The team's record mirrors that of Darvin Ham, the coach who was fired earlier in the season after a similarly lackluster start. At 12 and 10, the Lakers are underperforming, and Reddick's supposed expertise hasn't translated into tangible success. What's even more troubling is that despite all the so-called knowledge he had from years of podcasting and analyzing games, his decisions seem disjointed. The team lacks clear offensive identity, the defense is inconsistent, and there's no visible growth or development in player performance. Reddick's coaching style appears more theoretical than practical. He may have been great at offering insights in the booth, but his on-court leadership has been less than inspiring. What's most concerning is the sheer lack of adjustment. In his early press conferences, Reddick spoke like a man with all the answers, but his ability to execute strategies has proven otherwise. The team seems to be operating on autopilot, unable to find cohesion or consistency. The moment-to-moment -moment coaching decisions, substitution patterns, timeout management, offensive play calling, are questionable at best. If Reddick's knowledge of the game was as deep as he portrayed it to be, why aren't the Lakers looking like a well-oiled machine?
Why does the team still struggle in basic areas like defensive rotations, ball movement, and late game execution? The harsh truth that fans, players, and the front office must face is that Reddick's performance as a coach has not lived up to the lofty expectations that his podcast persona once promised. And when you look at his record, it's almost impossible to ignore the glaring similarity to Darvin Ham's struggles. After 22 games, both coaches sit with the same disappointing 12 and 10 record. The Lakers are not trending upwards. They are stagnating. And in the unforgiving world of the NBA, stagnation is a death sentence for any head coach, regardless of past pedigree or intellectual prowess. This isn't an argument about Reddick's basketball IQ. Nobody doubts that he knows the game, his insights are sharp, and his understanding of what works on the floor is unquestionable. But there's an inherent difference between being a good analyst and being a good leader. Coaching is about adjusting to ever-changing dynamics, reading the room, making split-second decisions, and motivating players when they hit their lows. Reddick, so far, has struggled with all of these aspects. It's easy to talk a big game from the safety of a podcast studio, but the grind of being an NBA coach demands far more than theoretical knowledge. The comparison to Darvin Ham's firing is striking.